particular video is on the production of a Kissel car radiator cap. Back when I got the vehicle, almost 30 years ago, there was a radiator on it. However, it's the wrong radiator. That radiator turns out to be one for early 1920s Studebaker. Year, sort of unknown, roughly 23. But it didn't have a radiator cap either. And obviously, we weren't going to use a Studebaker radiator on the Kissel. Took a couple of years, but I actually did procure another Kissel that had a radiator that was correct for the car. Now, some of you who've watched some of the other videos are probably already wondering why I'm telling you this when there's a radiator on the car. Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. Right now, let me tell you a little bit about what you're seeing. You're seeing the use of a Sherline miniature lathe to produce the radiator cap. Some of the things that are important to note here. The actual stock we're using was a thick walled brass tube. However, in order to run it, obviously on a four jaw chuck, which we are using here, we had to install by pressing a rod into the tube itself. And that was about a three quarter inch rod that we pressed into it. That allowed us to chuck it up in the four jaw chuck and get it to run completely true because that is an adjustable four jaw chuck, not a self centering four jaw chuck. Having done that, we then were able to turn the outside diameter of the radiator cap, that's the portion closest to the four jaw chuck. We also turned down the lower portion that you see that we are boring here to the diameter necessary for threading it to fit the actual Kissel radiator. Now, another couple things to note is you'll see that we're using a riser block under the headstock of the Sherline lathe, a riser tool mount, and there's actually a riser tailstock. The riser tailstock was used earlier in the production of the radiator cap. We just left it in place at this point. You'll also notice in the left of the picture most of the time a aluminum bracket and a gear motor. That aluminum bracket and gear motor are actually hooked through the Sherline lathe utilizing the system that Sherline provides for, provide, for threading to actually drive the y-axis of the Sherline lathe with power. Up next to the box that you normally control your headstock speed with We've added another box which controls both right or left movement of that particular motor, plus a center off, plus two potentiometers to control speed. So later on in the boring operation, you'll see that I actually switched to doing it with the power feed. The power feed was used on the outside portion that you've already seen that was machined prior to the video, and it gives an incredibly smooth surface. Now while the boring continues here, Let's talk a little bit more about the Kissel and the radiator situation. The Kissel currently has a 1914 Kissel radiator on it. Now, in shape and overall size, it's almost identical to the 18 radiator. It's a little bit different as far as front to back dimensions, but not much. The real problem is, is the 14 radiator does not have a separate shell. The 18 radiator does. And the actual 18 radiator that we procured, which was used from 1916 through 1918 on Kissel 638s, of which the 1918 is a 638, uses a separate radiator shell and radiator. The radiator itself has a different core pattern. The 1914 radiator is a square honeycomb radiator. Interesting, yes, it's called honeycomb, even though it's a square core. The 1918 radiator, again with the removable shell, is in fact a honeycomb honeycomb radiator. So it looks like a honeycomb when you look at it. So the two of them are visually quite different. We are currently working on the tooling necessary to make the new radiator core for that radiator. Here, as you see, we are making the actual radiator cap. Now we have the old Kissel 638 radiator that we procured, but there wasn't a radiator cap, and 
the neck of that radiator had pretty bad threads in it. So part of what you're looking at is the fact that I've made the portion which is going to be threaded, that's the portion we're boring, extra long. In case we decided we were going to thread it in that far onto the radiator neck. However, as we researched this more, we came to the conclusion it was highly unlikely that they made the radiator neck as long as you see here. Nonetheless, we're going to continue boring it out to the right size. Now, many people probably wonder, well, how the hell do you know what the right size is? The right size in this case was determined by taking the radiator cap off the 1914 radiator and measuring it for thickness of the wall in the area where it's threaded. And we just said, you know, if the 14 was this thickness, probably making the radiator cap for the 18 this thickness makes sense. The other reality is, is when you get to the very end of this video, you'll see that the radiator cap's really kind of cool. And it's made of solid brass. And I've already been asked by several people, weren't you just going to polish it and put it on that way? Well, no, I'm not, because it's actually not correct. We don't know if the radiator cap was made of brass, or if it was made of Bakelite, or made of some other material. No information in Kissel's brochures, catalogs, so we don't know. Before I go on with that, what we're doing here is, as I said, we decided that we didn't need that entire length for threading, so we're actually turning down waste stock using the power drive system. The X axis has to be fed in by hand, but otherwise this is entirely under power, moving right or left by flipping the switch on the box next to the regular control head. This makes the surface very beautiful, also gets the work done and keeps you from getting a heck of a short, sore shoulder. Back to the radiator cap. As I said, it's not going to be polished brass because it's not right. Every single photograph that we have from the factory very clearly shows the radiator always painted black and the cap always black, even when other colors are used. So the cap, even though it looks really beautiful and it's done in brass, will eventually be painted black when it's installed on the car to be correct the way Kissel would have had it done when it left the factory. And of course, the neat thing about brass, it's not ever going to rust, not going to wear out, not going to be a problem. And that radiator neck is actually made of steel. That was a lot of work just to clean the threads. And I must tell you, it's, you know, if you're going to go to this much trouble to make a radiator cap, you might as well use something that's going to last pretty much forever. So the brass radiator cap that's being made. As you can see, we still keep turning this down. And it didn't really take all that long, just a few minutes. And most of what you're seeing here is the turning down almost completely live when it was done. So it doesn't take too long to get rid of that with the power feed system, usually taking about, oh, 10 to 20 thousandths at the most per pass and removing it. But the power feed is really quite quick, as you notice, it going across. We'll let you watch that as it goes away here in the next few seconds. <laughs> turned down and here you're looking at the radiator cap with the threading done. You'll notice that we use the accessory cross slide 
and a couple of step blocks and a unique method of holding the cutting tool to do the threads on the radiator cap. Those of you familiar with the Sureline know that threading is done by hand. We didn't show you that because it's a little boring watching somebody turn threading one thousandth at a time all the way up and down and it takes a long time to do. Suffice it to say, it was threaded to match the neck on the radiator exactly. What we're doing here is we've converted the lathe into a mill and you'll notice that there's actually a riser block, just the same one we're using under the headstock, raising the mill up enough so that we could place our Sureline rotary table onto the cross slide and we're milling the actual radiator cap to remove the remainder of the sprue. I guess I wouldn't call it a sprue, probably call it the rod that we use for mounting it in the four jaw chuck because as you can see we're now not holding it from that end where the top of the radiator cap is we're holding it from the bottom on the inside that particular piece was at least sawed off part way and now we're removing the last of it about thirty thousandths of pass using that power feed system and we're just milling it off so it's level with the top of the radiator cap now one of the things that is not shown that when you get to the end of the video, the top of this radiator cap is not in fact flat. It is at this point when we mill it off to finish it, but the actual top of the radiator cap was given a three degree slope. That was accomplished by taking the same rotary table, the same four jaw chuck, the same mount that we've currently got the radiator cap in, and setting it on an angle table and with the angle table placed three degrees off being vertical, we were able to use a sanding drum in the mill and rotate the cap continuously, very slowly putting a three degree slope in the top of the cap. So if we were to get water on the top of the cap, it runs off the top of the cap down the sides and would drop down below that but in reality it would probably run back to the radiator neck. When you get to the very end you'll notice that there's a little relief if you pay attention in the photographs when the radiator cap is shown finished that allows the water to catch there and drip directly down and hopefully not run back against the actual radiator neck. What you're watching here is the use of that rotary table to put in finger grips. We studied at some length the photographs from the factory, which interestingly are generally side on. And this allowed us to actually scale using the tire size the photographs, which then allowed us to measure the radiator cap, figure out its exact size and height, and also figure out that it had exactly eight grips, or in other words, one finger grip every 45 degrees. With the rotary table, we rotate around each 45 degrees. We use the y-axis to feed in slowly the DRO to tell us our depth and we're using a grinding stone to cut the finger grips. This was chosen so there couldn't be any possibility of chatter since we are basically with a almost finished part and the process was repeated each time backing it out, rotating it 45 degrees, bringing it back in until we reached the depth that we felt was appropriate based on the photograph information that we had. And the end result, when you see it finished, is we think a very, very nice uh, radiator cap. And this particular grinding stone trick works really well as a method of getting those finger grips and not needing any real cleanup when we were done. We did do a little bit with a light sanding drum and the same 45 degree rotation. But there wasn't any major handwork at all to finish this. The part looks absolutely gorgeous as you'll see at the end of the video. And it is essentially ready to be wiped down and painted. It is probably the most interesting thing I've ever made on the Sureline yet and illustrates that the system allows you to do a great many things more than most people even think with what appears to be a relatively small machine. And, you know, someday it'd be nice to have something big, but having all these little attachments and stuff, it's amazing what you can actually accomplish with the Sureline system. Oh, and by the way, don't own stock in them or anything. Just letting you know, it actually works really well. 
So as we finish out the video here and you see the finger grips continuing to be ground, each, each time when you're using grinder for this, keep in mind you got to feed very slowly because you're cutting a large area all at once at a very slow rate. And you can see it almost like dust coming off as we cut this. But it does make for a beautiful, beautiful finished part. Look the photographs over and you'll see what the actual finished radiator cap looks like. And you can see the slope, etc. Hopefully you enjoyed the video a little bit about how we did it as well as what the radiator cap really looks like. And in the future, we'll have a lot more videos related to the Kissel and other vehicles we have. And hopefully you'll be interested in watching those. Stay tuned for more as you see the radiator cap on its way out.